Good evening. Uh, as president of the State Bar, it's my honor to present annual awards to deserving members of our legal community. Uh, this ceremony is truly one of my favorite parts of the annual meeting. Um, I was on the awards committee for many years, uh, and I took it very seriously. And it's important to a lot of people. It's important to the people that receive the awards. It's important to their family. It's important to the State Bar to honor these people. The individuals we recognize tonight have gone above and beyond for our organization as the State Bar, our profession, our state, and for the things they have done for either organizations that they represent or for what they represent. Uh, to help thank our recipients, we put together a short video presentation featuring the people who know them very well and can speak to their accomplishments. Our first award, the Distinguished Bar Service Award, recognizes attorneys who have provided valuable service and contributions to the legal profession in the state of New Mexico over a significant period of time. That criteria is what is used by the awards committee when they select among the many nominations that we receive at the state bar that are funneled through to the awards committee and that criteria of significant contribution for a long period of time is important. This year's recipient is Ruth O. Pergenzer. Ruth was nominated because she is a pillar for ethics and a strong role model and mentor in our community, and I like her a lot. <laughs> Ruth is the director of the Entrepreneurs and Community Incubator Program at the State Bar. She is co-counsel with Pergenzer, Basinger, Weidman, and Sale. She earned her law degree from UNM in 1986. Key the video. I've known Ruth for over 30 years because we started practicing law together and we have since become very good friends. We've spent many, many uh, Friday morning hiking in the foothills and have had so many good conversations about law and about professionalism and about the practice. What I can tell you about Ruth is she is a deep thinker and she also has an exquisite sense of ethics that goes far beyond the doctrines that govern our legal profession. So when Ruth told me that she was going to head up the Entrepreneurs and Community Lawyering Program, I could think of no better person to do the job. I could think of no better person to be a role model to these young lawyers and to be a sounding board and a guide for them. What I can also tell you about Ruth is that she is deeply appreciative of this award, but she is also deeply mortified by the attention that this award brings. Ruth prefers to do her work and make her contributions far in the background. So to me, it is doubly commendable that the State Bar this year has chosen to give the award to somebody who's not generally in the public eye. And so Ruth, you are just going to have to get over your natural reticence about these things because you really, really do deserve this award and I congratulate you so much. Ruth is a unique combination of legal brilliance and compassion. She has a strong sense for how lawyers should conduct themselves and for what it means to be a lawyer and she embodies those principles every day in her legal practice. When I think about Ruth and her service to the bar, I really think about her mentorship. Ruth is an excellent litigator, and she's been very generous in teaching me and many others how to try a case, how to conduct a deposition, or how to argue a legal issue in court. What she taught me the most, I think, is how to thoroughly prepare for any of those events and how to really care about the outcome. By her example, Ruth teaches us integrity and humility. I have been fortunate to know Ruth as a mentor, as a law partner, and as a friend. Ruth is really one in a million. Ruth, congratulations on being this year's recipient of the Distinguished Bar Service Award. I couldn't be happier for you. I know you don't like being in the limelight. However, you deserve this award. One of the unique privileges that we have in New Mexico is being able to choose our mentor. And that's something that we don't take for granted. You see, I chose you because of your reputation. 
your, the ethics that you show towards the law, your experience, and how well you're respected in our legal community. You see, Ruth, if I'm half the lawyer that you are, 25 to 30 years from now, I'll be so satisfied with my legal career. Congratulations. It's a good thing I've had a couple of glasses of wine and I don't, <laughs> and I don't have to drive home. Um, I am surprised and, and very honored to receive this award. It was unexpected, and I can't tell you how much it means to me. Uh, one of the themes that has sort of echoed through uh, this annual uh, bar convention is the, the importance of, of um, civility in the legal profession. Beginning lawyers cannot reach their full potential as lawyers, whether it's learning how to practice substantive law or learning how to be professional and civil without the uh, guidance and mentorship of more experienced lawyers. I have been so lucky uh, to be taught by outstanding lawyers throughout my legal career. And in the past 10 years, I have had the great good fortune to work with the uh, lawyers at Pregenzer, Basinger, Weidman, and Sale who have made collegiality, civility, uh, a commitment to excellence and pro bono service, uh, part of our firm culture. I am so grateful to have had the opportunity to work with these lawyers, these exceptional lawyers, uh, who have taught me so much. When I was offered the position uh, of director of the State Bar's new legal incubator program, Entrepreneurs and Community Lawyering, or ECL as I call it, I doubted whether I could make the transition from an ordinary lawyer, a practitioner, to a mentor, a full-time mentor. I could not have made that transition without the unstinting help of our legal community. ECL owes its existence to the support of the State Bar, the Board of Bar Commissioners, and an outstanding steering committee. It continues to grow through the vision of our Executive Director, Richard Spinello, and our General Counsel, Stormy Ralston. This program, designed to provide new solo practitioners with mentorship, training, and support, offers an exceptional opportunity for new solo practitioners uh, who want to serve their community while learning how to practice law and run a successful business. As those of you know who have tried uh, or and succeeded at developing a solo practice. The challenges are daunting. Our petitioner, our participating attorneys, and you saw Joe on that um, <laughs> on that video. They are ter terrific young lawyers. They are brave, uh, and they are a joy to work with. ECL could not continue to flourish as it has over the past years without the generosity uh, of the public bar, the private bar, and the judiciary. So many of you, with all of the demands of your jobs and all of the demands of, uh, of your commitments and your work schedules, have volunteered your time to teach, to present workshops, to develop materials, to encourage these ECL participants, our new lawyers. Um, I am so grateful for your help. I couldn't have done it without you, and this award
truly belongs to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. You really done a good job with these guys. They're, you've shaped them up. Good job. <laughs> Our next award is the Distinguished Bar Service Non-Lawyer Award. This award recognizes non-lawyers who have provided valuable service and contributions to the legal profession over a significant period of time. Um, being a non-lawyer, for a lot of people I know, is not a bad thing. <laughs> because it is what it is. But this year's recipient is Jim Jackson. He was nominated for his leadership and the difference he's made in our state for people with disabilities. What an honorable thing to do. Jim was the chief executive officer of the Disability Rights New Mexico for more than 38 years. From its founding in 1979 until his retirement this year, Jim also attended Cornell University and Georgetown University. Let's see what the people who nominated him have to say about Jim. 30 years ago, I started working at Disability Rights New Mexico with Jim Jackson and my plan was to stay for a few years. I quickly learned that under Jim Jackson's leadership, uh, he created an environment where the agency strived to use protection and advocacy services to improve the lives of people with disabilities. From our individual casework to our systems work to deinstitutionalizing New Mexico, Jim's leadership has encouraged the staff to be challenged, to celebrate our successes, to continue uh, to strive for improvement of services in New Mexico. Jim Jackson has made a huge difference in the lives of people with disabilities. His public policy work has become renowned in New Mexico. People look to him for his legislative reports to inform themselves of what's going on in the legislature. I can't think of anyone more deserving of this award than you. Congratulations, Jim. Often the quest for complex change can overwhelm an organization and staff. Jim Jackson modeled the way by working with his board and staff in small steps while working toward the final objective of changing the system of services. Mr. Jackson was able to challenge the practices of the bureaucracy. I always found him to be a patient leader and a genuine mentor. Mr. Jackson built a solid team of advocates and their support staff who stayed with him because he rewarded them with dignity and the quiet assurance that he had their back. I met Jim Jackson about 35 years ago and I've been working with him ever since on behalf of people with disabilities. He hired me as a lawyer at Protection and Advocacy and since that time, I have seen Jim direct scores of lawyers teaching us how to do the best disability advocacy we can do. He's impacted the Medicaid system, the child welfare system, the state hospital, the developmental disability system, prisons and jails. Any service system that serves people with disabilities, Jim Jackson has impacted it and he's directed us lawyers to bring lawsuits on behalf of people in all of those systems. So every person with a disability in New Mexico is better off today, thanks to Jim. Jim's work also has extended beyond New Mexico. He was on the board of directors of the National Association of Protection and Advocacy Systems for many years, and he was their president. And I've seen him do advocacy with United States senators and federal officials, as well as here in New Mexico. So I would say that Jim Jackson has done more for people with disabilities in New Mexico than any other person. And I really appreciate that the State Bar Association has named Jim the Distinguished Non-Lawyer Advocate for this year. Thank you. I'm, I'm really honored.
to uh, receive this award, uh, and I uh, will just say um, I don't have a prepared uh, speech. I'll be short, as you can see. I'm good at that. Um, I, I, uh, I, I have, I've gotten to say, many, some of my colleagues out there know that I, once in a while I say, I'm not a lawyer, but I play one on TV. And uh, I'm not a lawyer, but I've had, the, uh, I've had the privilege of running a legal agency for a long time, and um, I'm humbled by the, uh, the uh, tribute that some of my colleagues have, uh, have said today. Um, and I want to just give a shout out to all of the people who over the, all of those almost 40 years that I was associated with Disability Rights New Mexico um, uh, have worked uh, attorneys, advocates, and other folks who really made my job so much easier. Um, I got to get a lot of the credit for a lot of the good things that our agency did. Um, and it reflected really good work by a lot of people over all of those years. And so I was really... Uh, I was privileged and uh, uh, lucky to be in a position where I could have the kind of impact um, on disability policy in New Mexico that I think I did. And uh, I, I want to extend my appreciation to the Bar Association and all of you for uh, uh, receiving this award. Thank you. Our next award is the Justice Pamela B. Minzner Professional, Professionalism Award. This award recognizes an attorney who over a long and distinguished legal career has by their ethical and professional and personal conduct exemplified for their fellow attorneys the epitome of professionalism. This award's a little personal for me because this guy I consider to be a friend of mine. I've known him for a long time We've served on a, several boards together. Uh, he has served the State Bar of New Mexico without failure, without question, uh, done whatever's been asked of him, done a good job of it. Our winner this year is Charles B. Hill. Let's hear from his friends. I've had the honor of working with Chuck B. Hill for the past seven and a half years and observed the qualities and characteristics that have led to his receipt of this professionalism award. As one of the founding members of the Client Protection Fund Commission, Chuck reminds all attorneys of the importance of providing clients with the highest quality of legal services. As a member of the Commission on Professionalism, which is charged with operating the Bridge the Gap program, Chuck demonstrates to new lawyers the importance of practicing in a civil and professional manner at all times. And as an advocate for his clients in disciplinary matters, Chuck is consistent in keeping the cases about the facts and the law. Never are there personal attacks. Never is it about the personalities. In fact, in a time when there is a great deal of discussion about professionalism and civility in the practice of law, and when incivility and unprofessionalism continue to erode away our professional reputations, Chuck B. Hill serves as a model for all members of the bar in how a professional should practice law. Of course, I've never actually audited his trust management or law practice management skills, so congratulations, Chuck. Very well deserved. The State Bar Professionalism Award is named appropriately after Justice Pamela Minster. I knew uh, Justice Minzer, I knew her well, I had the privilege of serving with her on two courts. And I remember during our personal conversations uh, the high regard in which she held a Chuck B. Hill, the respect she had for him, and I know how glad she would be, how pleased she would be at this award today. I first got to know Chuck B. Hill when he was president of the State Bar and I was Chief Justice of the New Mexico Supreme Court. And he came to us one day and said, something terrible is, has happened. The Client Protection Fund uh, has no money and is defunct. And we said, well, that sounds terrible. Now tell us, what is the Client Protection Fund? Which I guess was part of the problem. And so he and I set about to put the mechanisms and structures in place uh, to restore the fund, to get it funded um, from contributions from lawyers all over the state. Uh, the Client Protection Fund is one of the best things the State Bar does. It provides some financial relief to clients who have been, well, ripped off by their attorneys. Uh, it's private, it's self-administered, it makes the bar uh, look 
are very good. And Chuck Behill led that, that uh, and it would not have happened without him. I'm personally pleased at this award, Chuck. Congratulations. Uh, you honor the bar, you honor the profession, and you honor us, you know, credit to us all. Have a, have a good day and congratulations. I'm honored to have the opportunity to talk about my partner, Chuck V. Hill, and say why, in my view, he deserves the professionalism award you give him today. He is a true professional. And when I think in terms of how Chuck V. Hill practices law, it's easy for me to break it down. It's, it's found in how he deals with three relationships. One, the client relationship. He is so earnest about what the client needs and what the client wants. The other relationship is that he has with the opposing counsel in litigation because litigation is what Chuck does and that's a hard relationship. That relationship is satisfactory when both lawyers listen to each other and communicate in a courteous way. And I've never seen Chuck V. Hill deal with any other attorney in an adversarial situation other than in that way. Finally, it's how you contribute to and what you think of the judicial system and how you convey those thoughts about the judicial system to others. You've got to show that it's a system to be respected, which it is. And Chuck V. Hill has always done that and contributed to it as witnessed by, for example, his presidency of the state bar. So you did a good job in your selection and uh, Mr. V. Hill practices this way while managing a law firm for 12 years. What a job. Thank you, Chuck, and thank you. Before I ask Chuck to come up, there's one important thing that no one has discussed. When our former executive director had to retire and the state bar began looking around, the Board of Bar Commissioners has been looking around for someone to chair a selection committee for our new executive director, Chuck V. Hill selflessly agreed to spend his time and effort to help us do that. It was superlative. I, I am in his debt forever for that. It was a great effort. Uh, and everyone on the Board of Bar Commissioners really appreciated the effort he made. He's a busy guy. We, and you know, you get effort from busy people, but Chuck agreed to do what we asked him to do as a non-member of the Board of Bar Commissioners, but with institutional knowledge and a past history with the bar that would understand what we needed to do. And so uh, as a representative of the Board of Bar Commissioners, uh, we would like to show our appreciation to Chuck V. Hill simply for that act. And I want to give him a round of applause for that. Thank you very much. Boy, after all those nice things, I think I might be ready to retire. Uh, <laughs> Um, it, it was so nice to hear from, from Bruce and everybody. I'm, I'm honored and privileged to, to get this award from the State Bar of New Mexico. Um, I'm honored and privileged because I knew, I knew Justice uh, Pam Minsner, uh, and it's humbling for me that I would get this award in her name because she played such an important role in my life as a, a role model and a mentor, and I know how much professionalism meant to her uh, as a person. I first met Justice Minsner when I was a young lawyer at the Rody Law Firm. Uh, we would have social programs, she would come up and talk to me, and, but as a junior lawyer she was always kind to me in, in every way and she always was genuinely interested in what was going on in my life, how my kids were doing, uh, what kind of things was I working on. Later, when I coordinated the firm's summer program, I would take our summer associates up to the Supreme Court building and she would give an hour of her time easy to take us around the courthouse, uh, show these new young lawyers uh, both courtrooms, and she would delight in explaining to those students the history of the courtrooms and why those who work in the legal profession 
should have respect for each other. In 1999, uh, when Justice Minzner became the first female Chief Justice of the New Mexico Supreme Court, she commented on the importance of professionalism. And she said in her speech, and I quote, the higher standard of professionalism is neither a matter of ethics nor a matter of malpractice. It is a standard that we ought to aspire to as a matter of lifelong commitment. It is a journey without hope of official reward or fear of official sanction. We are looking for a better way, doing right for right's sake. In 2000, she established the Professionalism Commission. And in 2005, it was my privilege to serve with her as, as co-chair of that commission. We met many times at the state bar offices and she just demonstrated uh, every day her enthusiasm for promoting professionalism. And that enthusiasm was contagious. And she worked very hard on that commission to promote those ideals among all members of the bench and bar. I've been fortunate in my life to have had many mentors uh, personally and in my career as a lawyer. Those mentors started uh, with my parents, John and Bessie Vigil. And my mother's here. Would you stand up, Mom? Give a round of applause. <laughs> they taught me the values of kindness and respect. I've had many more mentors at the Rody Law Firm, where I've practiced for almost 30 years. And I met even more mentors as I became involved in the State Bar. And as I uh, worked as a State Bar President, meeting people like Justice Charlie Daniels, who's here today. Uh, Bob Carlson, who's the uh, president of the ABA, is here today. Also, someone I look for, uh, learn from as I, I move forward in the ABA. But my greatest mentor was Justice Minzner. And I think Justice Minzner would agree with me that lawyers have a special place in today's society. Ours is the only profession that asks its members when they join to stand up and to take an oath to swear to maintain the respect for the courts and fellow lawyers. And that is the oath that Justice Minzer took very seriously. New Mexico Supreme Court Justice Ed Chavez once noted that Justice Minzer would always end her speeches with adelante. That's Spanish for keep moving forward. So I'm gonna do the same today. It is the State Bar of New Mexico that can and will continue to be a leader in promoting the ideals of professionalism. I'm very proud that the bar continues to do that work. And Bill Slees, I'm gonna send you our, our trust accounting tomorrow. <laughs> Let me know how it, it turns out. <laughs> Thank you all very much. I really appreciate it. trust accounting thing doesn't bleed over. <laughs> Chuck, thank you. Well deserved. My friend, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. Our next award is the Outstanding Legal Program Award. This award recognizes, out, recognizes outstanding law-related organizations or programs that serve the legal profession and the public. This is a difficult, I'm off script, so be careful here. Watch me, David. Okay. This is a difficult award because programs, by their very nature, are a little difficult to quantify. And when the awards committee looks at these programs that have been nominated, it's a little bit hard to distinguish exactly what they do and how that fits into a law-related organization or program because it can be somewhat attenuated or it can be totally immersed. And so as historically what we've done is what's the record, what's the product, what's been done that matters for not only the legal profession but the state of New Mexico. Uh, this year's recipient is the Family Support Services Program and it was nominated because its success in helping reunite families and giving members of the public a voice during difficult times in their lives. What an admirable thing, what an admirable thing, especially during the current environment when you're reuniting families, what could be more important? What could be more important? The Family Support Services Program uses a multidisciplinary team approach to representing parents in juvenile abuse and neglect proceedings. 
um, I have represented people in juvenile abuse and neglect proceedings, and the Family Support Services program is absolutely essential. Uh, the team consisting of an attorney, a social worker, and a peer mentor is focused on engaging the parent to create transformative change in the life of their family. Not an easy, easy to say, not easy to do. Working together, these team members reduce time to permanency for families after they have been disrupted and improve overall case outcomes. Let's hear from the people who are involved with the Family Support Services Program. I think a lot of the success for our program comes from parents not feeling so alone in the CYFD process. A lot of times parents come into the system and they have an attorney that represents them in court, but they don't see the attorney as much as they see the worker from CYFD. No matter how good the worker at CYFD is, there's a very adversarial relationship that exists because CYFD has their kids. And a lot of what we do is working with parents on um, building a relationship with CYFD to have a working relationship to be able to get their kids back and be successful. And parents feel less alone in the process because they have someone who is on their side. Thank you for acknowledging our program. Um, I love the work that I do. I love the parents that I work with. And it has been a great experience. This program, um, it helped me by being a voice for myself, in between myself and my attorney. Um, whenever I had issues with certain situations, I could call the caseworker and they help calm me down and give me advice and they would reach out to my attorney and give me the advice that I would need. So I just wanna say thank you to the program and thank you for all the help that they gave me in dealing with my CYFD case. As a court appointed attorney in abuse and neglect cases, I am a huge fan of the Family Support Services Program. When I'm fortunate enough for, to have um, a social worker appointed for one of my clients, I feel that the opportunity for success is greatly increased. I have had cases where I'm not so sure the families would have been reunited without the help of the social worker who is assigned to my client. I, I'm just amazed constantly at the level of support these individuals provide for the clients who feel so vulnerable. So it's just an amazing array of possibilities that open up with a family support services social worker on the, on the case. accepting the award for the uh, Family Support Services Program. And Beth, let me give you the award. Give a speech. Thank you, Ben. You're very welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so I was nominated to um, give a speech this evening because they didn't tell me I had to give a speech. And because I think nobody else wanted to give the speech. <laughs> Um, but truly, as you can see, this is, this is a group effort. Um, we've built really great community, both um, with social workers, with court personnel, with attorneys, with the Children, Youth, and Families Department. And in fact, I think we're the only multidisciplinary uh, program in the country that brought CYFD in the Child Protective Services Agency and at the very inception of our program. I'm excited about this award this evening because we've waited a long time for some recognition. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we have had um, many, many struggles. I'm fortunate to have people who've been very supportive and hung in there um, Dominica Montano, who was our one and only social worker, um, who um, I thought was maybe going to have a meltdown in the first nine months that we were a program. 
um, all of CYFD, uh, especially Cantrell, who just gave us the benefit of the doubt and, and worked with us, certainly all of the social workers without whom none of this would be possible. They truly meet people where they are. These are broken people. Um, they were probably broken children and uh, they do a phenomenal job of uh, helping them reach their potential as parents. Whether that means reuniting with their family or not, and sometimes it means not. Um, also, of course, to, to Leslie, who uh, I know wasn't super excited the first time I mentioned we were doing this program, um, but is now um, one of our best champions, um, the court, Judge McDonald, and, uh, and the AOC, already, I mean, none of this would have happened without you all giving us the go-ahead, the Supreme Court. So I am profoundly grateful for this award. Um, and I, we are in our fifth year, and I am looking forward to many more awards for this program as we gain some national recognition. Um, and you should find our Twitter handle, because I'll be tweeting a picture of us later. Thank you so much. <laughs> She didn't have any notes. <laughs> just saying, just saying. When, you, when it's heartfelt, you don't need notes, do you? Great award, this well-deserved. Our next award is the Outstanding Young Lawyer of the Year. This award is presented each year to a young lawyer who exemplifies professionalism, demonstrates a commitment to their clients in public service, and enhances the image of the legal profession. This year's recipient is Shamara Henderson. Shamara was nominated because of her dedication and passion for our legal community and the community at large. Shamara Henderson of Henderson and Groman PC practices in the area of criminal defense, plaintiff's injury, employment discrimination, civil rights, and victim representation. Shamara is president of the University of New Mexico School of Law Alumni Board, past president of the New Mexico Black Lawyers Association, board member at large for the National Bar Association, a member of the New Mexico Board of Bar Examiners, and a member of the State Bar Committee on Diversity in the Legal Profession. Wow. <laughs> when do you sleep, Shamara? So now let's hear from the people who know Shamara and appreciate what she's done. My first contact with Shamara Henderson was by letter. I had applied to go to law school and I received a letter from a Shamara Henderson who was the president of the Black Law Students Association at the University of New Mexico School of Law. And she encouraged me to come to UNM. And I thought, oh, well that was a, a very nice letter. A uh, couple of months later, I received a phone call from a Shamara Henderson and uh, we talked, and she, of course, again, encouraged me to go to UNM. And after that phone call, I said, you know, this is very different than any, anything that any of the other schools had done. And when you meet Shamara, you find out that that's just a typical uh, Shamara thing to do, to go out of her way, to go the extra mile. As a 1L, I met Shamara in person. Um, it was either the first or second day of classes and she introduced herself and she said, you have a mentor assigned to you um, by the law school, but I'm going to be your unofficial mentor. And for the past 13 years, she has been just that. She's been a mentor and also a friend. Uh, if there's a board, she's served on it. If there's a conference, she's presented at it. Uh, she is just a powerhouse. And uh, more than that, she has a heart of gold. She gives back to her community every single day. And I am so proud of you, Shamara. Congratulations on receiving this award. I first met Shamara Henderson she, when she was a student at the UNM Law School. She worked with the Black Law Student Association at that time, and she supported the New Mexico Black Lawyers Association. She brought new blood to our organization kind of like putting a new engine in an old car. Shamara not only works at the macro level, 
but also at the micro level. She has worked very hard to raise funds to award book scholarships to UNM entering students. She has worked very hard to raise funds to support graduates who are about to take the bar exam. Because of all her hard work, Shamara earned this award. Congratulations. Shamara Henderson is one of the most giving people I've ever known. She dedicates so much of her time to serving the community. When she and I first met, we were both working for the Department of Justice, where she found time to not only have a full caseload as a prosecutor, but also serve as the Smart on Crime Coordinator. Now, as a shareholder in Henderson and Groman PC, Shamar and I have a very busy and active caseload, and she still finds time for things that are important to her. She's the Vice President of the UNM Alumni Board, She's past president of the New Mexico Black Lawyers Association and sits on the executive committee of the National Bar Association. Shamara gives her time to immigration pro bono work, volunteering at museums, and cleaning up public parks. Shamara, you're amazing, and congratulations on this well-deserved award. To say that I am very honored to be receiving this award is an understatement. Um, thank you um, to everybody who was willing to speak in that video. That means more than you know to me. Um, I want to make sure that I thank my mom who came here this evening from Texas to be here with me to receive this award. Um, you've been an amazing person to me. I wouldn't be the woman that I am today without you. Sorry, that video kind of got to me. <laughs> um, I wouldn't be the woman that I am today without you, Mom, so thank you for being here. I do appreciate that. I want to make sure that I thank all the mentors that I have in this room. There are so many people that have given to me. Um, Justice Daniels, Randy, Uncle Ray, Pamela, um, Jerry. There's so many people here, I'm sure I'm missing somebody, who um, took the time to not only be part of my professional development, but my personal development. And what I mean by that is, every single time I wanted to make like a career move, yes, these people were here for me. Every single time I wasn't sure what the next step was, yes, those people were there for me. But they also took the time to be there for me to say, who do you want to be as a person? Yes, you are an attorney, but who are you as a person? What are the things that you're going to contribute to the world as a good human being? And that's always been very, very important to me. I want to make sure that I thank and appreciate all of my peers. There's so many people in this room that went to law school with me, um, grew up in the bar with me for the last decade, um, that deserve to be standing here, to be honest. We have had many successes together. We have cried together. The bar comes to mind. <laughs> um, just a really, you know, leaned on each other's shoulders, and all of you have been mentors to me in different ways um, throughout the last many years, and so I just want to make sure that I take the time to appreciate all of you as well. Um, I have to thank my law partner. She hates public acknowledgments, but I'm going to thank her anyways. <laughs> she took a leap of faith with me when we decided to leave the U.S. Attorney's Office together last October. Um, she has made me a better attorney, a better writer. And as everyone's noted, I like to do a lot of things, so she is tolerant of my inability to say no <laughs> and allows me to go run off and do all the other things that I like to do as well, being an attorney as part of the firm. So thank you very much for being such a wonderful partner. Um, I also want to thank the people here who are not attorneys that came. Um, I really do appreciate everything that you've ever done. You've all been so supportive of me, um, and I carry you with me every single day when I'm moving forward in my career. And also, just again, is what does it mean to be a good person? And I think one of the things that I've learned the most the last decade is with becoming an attorney means a lot of responsibility. We have power and authority that others will never have. We are able to walk through doors that others will never be able to walk through. And I think with that comes an amazing amount of responsibility to decide what kind of people do we want to be that has that power? For me, that's giving back to the legal community. 
as giving back to the community as a whole. And more importantly, that means every single time that I'm able to open a door, I make sure that door remains open for someone to come through behind me, like so many of you have done for me in this bar, which is very important to me. So with that, I wanna thank you. It's a great honor to be here. That video got to me, I'm very upset about that. <laughs> but thank you so much, everybody. I really do appreciate this award. Thank you so much. Again, with the no notes. I gotta, I gotta have notes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Our next award is the Robert H. LaFollette Pro Bono Award. This award is presented to an attorney who has made an exemplary contribution of time and effort without compensation to provide legal assistance over their career to people who could not afford the assistance of an attorney. What an admirable thing. This year's recipient is Susan E. Page. Susan was nominated for her tireless service to pro bono even after her retirement. Susan has been a lawyer since 1982. She has worked 23 years at the Second Judicial District Attorney's Office where she retired as the Special Proceedings Division Deputy and Training Director. She serves on the Judges and Lawyers Assistance Committee, representing lawyers who live with bipolar disorder, and is chair of the Senior Lawyers Division, which I think is a new job for Susan. Her practice consists exclusively of pro bono work, primarily staffing legal clinics. As an aside and a personal note, uh, Susan came up to me today in the hall where there's people everywhere, but she purposely tracked me down and has offered to assist with the uh, programs that the Chief Justice has begun instituting as far as assisting underrepresented and unrepresented litigants in the New Mexico court system through the ODR program and the Limited License Legal Techno Te Technician program. And uh, let's hear from the people who nominated Susan. I nominated Susan Page for the Volunteer Attorney of the Year Award because it's deserving. She has dedicated much of her retired time to helping others gain access to justice. Thank you so much for your commitment to our community. Thank you for all that you do. You show up consistently throughout the years. You bring and recruit more attorneys to help. We appreciate what you do. You really put people at ease with what you provide to our community. And we are so grateful for your hard work. Thank you, and I'm happy to be your friend. Congratulations. The volunteer attorney program's uh, mission is to expand and support uh, volunteer attorneys, paralegals, and law students to meet the civil uh, justice needs of low-income New Mexicans uh, throughout the state of New Mexico. One of the things that, that uh, Susan, uh, that I have noticed at the legal fairs is that she demystifies the legal uh, system in one sense that she, uh, uh, when she's talking to the client, she's uh, talking in normal everyday terms and uh, the resolution, the problem, everything is so, such that uh, when the person walks away, they've understood what the issue is in their own, uh, the way they express themselves and how to resolve the issue. The volunteer attorney program and I are extremely fortunate to have Ms. Page as one of our volunteers and congratulate her on receiving this most deserved uh, award of outstanding pro bono attorney. In addition, uh, Susan, I believe, is cool and she's a good friend. Susan Page has been volunteering with the 13th Judicial District Court for many years. She's patient and kind, and sometimes folks just need someone to listen to them, even if they don't have a claim for relief. And she's honest with them and will tell them that. She's always there. She recognizes our need. We serve 30 to 40 people a month in each of our districts. So Susan, thank you so much for all your years of service and no one deserves this award more than you do.
right, well, I just wanted to say that um, I have a real hope here. I want to inspire every lawyer in this room to do pro bono work. And I'd like to inspire everyone who's not a lawyer to come and help us. Because you can do screening. You don't have to be a lawyer to find out what people need. And we always need more people to kind of funnel people toward us. I learned how to do pro bono work back when I was uh, in law school in St. Louis. I uh, volunteered at Legal Aid. My mother recommended I do that because she knew I was bored. And because I wasn't getting school credit and I wasn't getting paid for it, they gave me the cases of people who had no legal case at all. And so I would just sit there and I learned that you can answer almost any legal question with one of two answers. It depends. <laughs> or don't do it, you'll be sorry. <laughs> now, I mentioned in my bio that I, I uh, live with bipolar disorder and uh, I'm going to be in another video next Friday at, it'll be at the South Broadway Cultural Center down in Albuquerque. Chris Schuler made it for the Behavioral Health Insti uh, Initiative in Albuquerque. It's also going to be all over Channel 13, Channel 50, Channel 19, and if you'd like to know all the times, just look me up on Facebook because I finally managed to figure out how to get it on there on about the fourth try. So it's on there. Um, but uh, uh, when I was at a very low point after I retired, I decided to see if I could go just volunteer in Metro Self-Help, where Renee is the, is the linchpin, because both of her people that worked with her had retired at the same time, and you know how long it takes the state to replace anybody. So I just sat there basically listening to people and saying, let me ask Renee. And it was wonderful that she supported me when I needed it. So then I've been doing all these clinics, and finally the screeners, people like Felipe, admitted that they gave me people who had mental illness. I thought it was just me that I was, you know, <laughs> and, uh, but people would come up to me and they would, they would tell me, you know, I have bipolar disorder, and I'd say, uh-huh, I do too, and I would say, what are you taking? And I'd say, yeah, that one didn't work for me, and uh, <laughs> it, it worked really well. But um, I wanted to uh, uh, share with you three things, and then I'm going to conclude with a poem that I wrote back when I was volunteering more, more uh, steadily down in Los Lunas with Beth. But I wanted to tell you that I was proudest of my service as a pro bono attorney this month when the Senior Lawyers Division sponsored this, these uh, Bernalillo County Civil uh, Legal Clinic and we had 11 lawyers show up. I have never seen that many lawyers. They didn't hardly know what to do with themselves. It was wonderful. I was the happiest when a lonely woman who was newly home here to help her mother. Came, she had just moved back after 30 years or 20 years in Oregon. And she took me up on my offer. I gave her my card and said, uh, uh, she's out of work. And I said, uh, if you want to know what there is to do in town, you know, call me, email me, te text me. And she did. And so we started doing things together. And, uh, and the person who taught me the most is a woman that I met who uh, uh, needed it. Uh, to file for bankruptcy. And I'll admit it, I was kind of stalling, asking her a few more questions, because bankruptcy is pretty easy. Um, either you should or you shouldn't. And, uh, uh, you know, either it's going to work for you or it isn't. But I, I was asking her a little bit about her background to see if she was sophisticated enough to take my advice. And it turned out she had an art degree from New Mexico State. And I said, gee, I was thinking of taking art lessons. What do you charge? $15 an hour. I said, sign me up. So she's been teaching me how to, how to um, do art for the last year, and a little over a year. And uh, I progressed kind of from pre-kindergarten to about fourth grade. But, uh, <laughs> but it's been fun. And this is a woman I would have never met otherwise. And she told me one time she considered me her closest friend. And it tells me what a deep valley of loneliness there is out there in the world. And uh, Justice Daniels and I are forming a retirement task force to try to help with what do you do with yourself when you're not working anymore? Those of you who are overworking and making yourself crazy, there will come a time, and it is a challenge. And uh, so, you know, uh, give, us, give us your best wishes. So I'm going to read this for you. It's called Working for Free. 
By the time I get there, the court lawyer is giving her orientation talk, reassuring a room full of folks they will get some help today. The volunteer screeners leave me in the dust, sorting the issues between civil and family, civil being harder on my brain, family harder on my heart. First family steps up to my table. I introduce myself saying, how can I help you today? Hoping to head off hearing their whole life story. <laughs> so many times the real problem is financial or personal or the law just isn't on their side. If there is a real legal issue, I can pull some forms and get one family started while I greet the next, asking for just a minute to write a sketchy note. Some regulars show up later, believing we'll remember details from when we talked some time ago. I know the faces, but little else. Finally, we've seen everyone who didn't give up waiting. I head back north, satisfied, knowing that people felt better after they talked with me. Their smiles and thanks are payment enough. I just met Susan today for the first time. Uh, it was a pleasure. I have two things to mention. The bank, I'm a member of the bankruptcy bar. We would like to think bankruptcy is way more complicated than what you make it. I, I don't know whether that's true or not, but we would like to think so. And the second thing is if you and Justice Daniels are starting a retirement initiative, you need to talk to Ed Chavez because he is lost as a duck. <laughs> Our next award is the Seth D. Montgomery Distinguished Judicial Service Award. It recognizes judges who have distinguished themselves through long and exemplary service on the bench and who have significantly advanced the administration of justice or improved the relationship between the bench and bar. This year's recipient is the Honorable Charles W. Daniels. Justice Daniels was nominated for this award for his dedication and enthusiasm for life, the law, our community, and the legal profession. I will merely outline and hit some high spots of his accomplishments because we don't have time. And I've got to read my notes. <laughs> Justice Daniels was appointed to the New Mexico Supreme Court in 2007 in November. He has been twice selected by his fellow justices to serve as the Chief Justice. He received his bachelor's degree from the University of Arizona, magna cum laude. His law degree from UNM, graduating first in his class, and a Master of Laws in Trial Advocacy, advocacy from Georgetown University Law Center, having been awarded a Prettyman Fellowship. He recently announced his planned retirement from the court effective January the 1st, 2019, upon completion of his current term. Now let's hear from the folks who know Justice Daniels best. I know Chuck for, for 30 years. Uh, he's been my bandmate for those 30 years. I've never had a case with him. I've never had a case before him, but I've seen from afar how hard he works at that. And I know how hard he works at uh, the band we, we have together. Um, I know that when he was first Chief Justice, he made it his mission to visit every judicial district in the state, and he would travel at night sometimes just to get them. He would be at band practice and, and have to leave after that to, to uh, do his duties as Chief Justice. So I know how hard he works. And our band, just recently, he uh, took it upon himself to buy all the recording equipment and set it up in his garage so that the band could issue its first uh, CD, which we did last June. Uh, Chuck is as committed to having fun in his extracurricular activities as he is to working hard at his day job. And uh, he's a uh, great bandmate and a, and a good friend. I first met Charlie Daniels in late August 1971. It was the first day that Charlie and I started teaching at the University of New Mexico Law School. We became fast friends immediately and have remained so over the last 47 years, a long time. Right away, we started um, 
a sideline of doing some criminal defense work, um, doing felonies at $750 a pop. We were both greenhorns, but I recognized right away what a special lawyer Charlie was. Right away, the people in New Mexico and around the country came to recognize Charlie for the outstanding lawyer he was and is. If you haven't seen Charlie do a cross-examination in, in the courtroom, you've missed a master class in cross-examination. Charlie is a Prometheus of the law. He is fully engaged in life and fully engaged in the law. He has done so with vigor and humor and heart. He has done so with consistent excellence. We are all the better for it. Congratulations, Charlie. I'm here to congratulate Justice Charles W. Daniels on receiving the Seth Montgomery Distinguished Judicial Service Award and to say a little bit about Charles W. Daniels as a person. Uh, Charles W. Daniels is not just one person, he's many. He's uh, a jurist, uh, an attorney, uh, a philanthropist. He's uh, one of the best race car drivers I've ever seen, or drive anything, and a musician. Charles W. Daniels once told me when I was having trouble with an attorney who wasn't being very professional, and I decided I was going to be as unprofessional as he was. Uh, Justice Daniels, Attorney Daniels at the time, told me, Woody, remember, mejor un pendejo que dos. That saying has kept me in good stead for many years in my judicial career and my professional career. Let me say this, I have come to know Charlie, as I said, the last 40 years. He is one of the most generous, intelligent, professional, ethical people I have ever known. It's an honor to know you, Charlie. No one is more deserving of this award than you. I wish you the best, and God bless you. what the person who's uh, last has to take on. Everybody's ready to go. Uh, but I, I want to speak a little bit about how much I appreciate giving this award and to share with you some thoughts on that and on serving on the court. Um, I have to disagree with what Woody said about my being the most deserving person for this award because I'm not. One of the th reasons that the recipients of these awards feel so humbled about it is because your first thought when you receive an award like this is why me? Because you think of all the other people that you know are equally deserving. This is the Judicial Achievement Award. Here's Chief Judge uh, McDonald from the 13th District Court. There are judges uh, all around this courtroom that I know to be outstanding people and deserving of the award. And you have to think, why did I get this, and why not them? And part of it comes from the job that I was lucky uh, to fall into, being on the Supreme Court. I, I wasn't destined to be on the Supreme Court either. There are a lot of other people who could have done it. Uh, Justice Boston and I had a conversation when we were serving as colleagues on the court, uh, and I remember his saying, you know, there are a lot of other good lawyers who could be here besides us? Um, we're not the only people who could do this job. We weren't destined to do it, but we're here, and it's our responsibility, and we have authority that we have to exercise, and we have to step up to it. And I've never forgotten that. Being on the Supreme Court has provided uh, great opportunities. I hope most of you saw and heard the talk that was given this morning by Michael Morton, who spent a quarter of a century in prison for a horrible murder of his wife that he didn't commit, and was one of the, ultimately one of the lucky 
ones uh, who was falsely imprisoned, who finally got exonerated. We'll never know how many there were or still are um, that haven't been exonerated. But I was so moved by that talk, I immediately got out the book that came with our materials and <coughs> started reading it. And I was struck by the first page of the book and something that's said here in the foreword that uh, relates to the opportunity to serve on the court. That we're all faced throughout our lives with agonizing decisions, moral choices. Some are on a grand scale. Most of these choices are on lesser points. But we define ourselves by the choices we've made. On the Supreme Court, you have the opportunity to make a lot of choices um, that can have great impact and that end up being very vi visible. And there's a reason that I'm up here instead of one of our very deserving trial judges because of the visibility and the opportunity and the authority that we have on the Supreme Court. When I turned the lights on, in my chambers at the Supreme Court for the first time in 2007 and sat down at the 80-year-old desk that's still there today, I was struck by the fact that the person before me at that desk had been Pamela Mensner, whom I loved and respected, and whom the state learned to love and respect. But I originally knew her back when Joe Goldberg and I started at the law school together. We all started the first year as young. I mean, we weren't born old. Uh, <laughs> I think we were all three still in our 20s then. And uh, it would have been foolish to say we were destined for greatness or for awards or anything like that. But over the years, we had great opportunities that, that were th thrust upon us, great choices we were called upon to make. And, and so in a way, we were lucky to get in a position where someone would think we have done something significant. Uh, before Justice Mensner, the person who sat at that 80-year-old desk was Seth Montgomery. And I remember uh, sitting on his nominating commission, his Merit Selection Commission in 1989. I was on that commission. I remember one of the fellow commissioners asking him, Mr. Montgomery, you've represented corporations working in that big law firm you're with. Uh, how can you have any appreciation for the rights of the poor and the downtrodden and individuals and, and people you haven't represented? And I still remember his saying, anyone who would judge the kind of justice I'm going to be by the kind of cases I ended up handling uh, doesn't understand me and might be very surprised. And he proved that when he came onto the court. He stepped up to the responsibilities and made himself a role model in New Mexico law and a landmark in New Mexico history because of the way he lived up to that job after he was fortunate enough to get it. I have served on the court with a number of wonderful and worthy justices. A number of them here are here, some former colleagues, some current colleagues, and I can tell you every one of them has been deserving of every award you can think of. They have been wonderful colleagues. They have been wonderful public servants. They have stepped up to the responsibilities and exercised the authority in the most wonderful way. When I turn out the lights on December 31st, I'm not going to stay up till midnight, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Those days are over. But when I turn out the lights at the end of the year, I won't know who's going to sit behind that 80-year-old desk next. But I can tell you this, based on past experience, I'm confident that there will be some good candidates who will step forward and offer their service, who may not know quite what they're getting into, but I'm confident that when they sit behind that desk, they will live up to it. They will grow. And, and they will become great public servants for New Mexico, for the justice system in New Mexico. And I, I gratefully accept this award, not just for me, but for all the judges and justices 
who have stepped up around the state and offered their service and lived up to the responsibilities and gone above and beyond the call of duty. Thank you all. to agree with Woody about the race car driving. Justice Daniels is the best race car driver I've ever known because he's the only one I've ever known. <laughs> and on a personal note, Justice Daniels swore me in at my first year as a Board of Bar Commissioner. He's been supportive, generous, friendly. Uh, we've served on commissions and boards together. Uh, he's always been willing to lend a hand. Uh, he's always greeted me in a collegial, professional manner. We've always gotten along. Uh, Justice Daniels, well-deserved. Thank you. Thank you for your service. <laughs> that concludes our uh, ceremony. If you want pictures, Evan is here to take pictures. She's over here. If you want pictures with your family, I'm sure none of you want a picture with me. That's fine with me. Uh, but. Please stay, stick around and she will accommodate you. Thank you all for coming.